Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone, wherever you are in the world. I'm Nicole and this is Inspire Travel, where I help you guys to inspire you to travel and also think about travel a different way. Today's video is going to be about something kind of personal to me. Um, I am a solo traveler, like I said in my welcome video, um, and I also have a stammer. So I'm, this is going to be talking about uh, how to travel as a solo traveler with a stammer. Um, disclaimer, if you hear my voice is a bit raspy, even more than usual, it's because I'm getting over a sore yeah. throat. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so this video today is going to be about how to... I'm going to give you a little bit of breakdown about my stammer in particular. People I've met who stammered, the, the British Stammering Association, or Stammer as it is called now and other resources you may be able to find, and also talk about the five tips, four or five tips, about how you can help yourself whilst traveling with a stammer. Okay, cool. So my stammer started at five years old. Um, I was talking okay up until then, or learned to talk. Um, I went to, I went to, for the weekend with my dad, uh, to my dad's house, and I don't know, something happened between me and my dad, or, and yeah, I just, just, stammering however I do know that there are stammerers in my family my uncle used to stammer I uh, have great great um grandfather I guess used to stammer as well and other other and an uh, ancestors that used to stammer too so um it is in my family I don't know whether it jumps a few generations I don't know but this one happened because of a childhood trauma most of the time stammers do happen because of childhood trauma or something stressful that happens at childhood um and then therefore you end up I don't know what goes on in your ne neurological brain but it's just something that happens. Um, it can happen by other means. Over the last few years, I've been a bit, last couple of years actually, I've been a bit more um, accepting of it. I never really accepted it. I understood I had it, but I didn't accept it. That's a, there's a difference between having something and accepting it, in my opinion. Um, I think as I turned 30, I started to accept it. So, a few, 2019. Um, and I've been a real big kind of advocate for it on social media. And I, you never get me stammering on social media. Like, what? Definitely something that I find, um, it's funny how people are, though. Like, I didn't think that people would be accepting of it. My friends and stuff are accepting of it. And I'm like, people that I wouldn't even think were accepting of it were accepting of it. I'm just like, whoa, it's nuts. But most people know I have it, so it's okay. Um... I wouldn't expect anything less from them, so, um, or anything more, to be honest, um, yeah, so, that's basically my little breakdown, it's not really much, but I just wanted to introduce it a little bit, there are various, various, um, organizations and associations, I've got them written down here, um, so, the BSA, which is now called Stammer, was founded in 1978, um, in London, um, and one of the leading uh, centres is the Michael Paling Centre. Um, I have gone to that centre. I've gone to many centres. Listen, my my speech therapy my speech therapy journey was like ten years, like, and I'm still stammering. It's just nuts. The last thing I did was City Lit. Like, there's a, there's a course, two week course in City Lit, and you could go and have a group session, and it was cool. I actually made some really cool friends from that. And it's really weird because like. I don't know if any any of you guys stammer, but if you do, you understand this. Like, you feel quite isolated. You feel quite lonely. So to hear other people stammer and the way they stammer is quite interesting. Like, it makes you think, oh, yeah, there actually are other people. You know there are people, but you don't really, they're not in your inner circle. Unless you know someone who stammers, you're not going to really hear it. So it is, um, it is pretty extraordinary to me to um, be amongst and have friends that stammer because it's really it's weird when someone un seemingly understands but doesn't know what you're going through it's different to understand and try and sympathize but to know really know is hard like you don't you don't find many people like that so yeah if you can find friends that have stammers and you're a stammer like do it because you're gonna 
feel so much more connected to it. You have your own little network. Like, it's kind of cool. So, yeah. So, BSA was one. Um, ISA, which is International Stammering Association, was founded in Sweden in 1995. I didn't know that, actually, by the way. Um, <laughs> ASHA, which is American Speech Language and Hearing Association, was founded in 1925 and it's going to be funny because they're going to be celebrating their 100th year in 2025 so that we that we have been done for 100 years it's cool no it's nice i think i think that's really sweet like they've been helping people it's funny how like you don't really think about how undetected stammering is i don't know i think now it's becoming a lot we're pushing for it to become a lot more spoken about and not just talking about stammering but have stammerers in the limelight, in the spotlight, whether that be TV, radio, theatre, film, anything, like media in general, like, yeah, so it's cool. Um, uh, ELSA, which is the European League of Stuttering Association, I got to tell you before, it can be called stammer and can be called stuttering, it's personal preference, I prefer stammer because it's just an easier word for me to get out. Um, and that was founded in 1990 um, and they work along 12 different countries to help um, 12 different countries around Europe to bring awareness and to bring support to people who stammer um, I I know of a st- stammering course in Milan I will be going to Italy next month that's why part of the reason why I'm talking about this um like so, but it's in, but it's wholly in in Italian. I'm assuming so. That's going to be a whole another challenge. But they do do this thing. They do do this do this uh, course, which is like just breathing technique. I'll give it a go. <laughs> um, not on my trip, but I will inquire about it on my trip and then go at a later date. Um, to do the course. So yeah, that's something. Cause I've I've always uh, I've been looking for. Um, and I have found actually. Um, people who stammer learning another language. Um, it's been quite a challenge actually to try and find people, but I have found people and people learning Italian or no Italian who are of of Italian um, nationality but have a stammer. Um, some of them are really sweet. Um, <laughs> um, Ronan is someone who's learning Spanish, and when I first contacted Stammer about maybe asking them to. Um, because they contacted me asking me to do an article about my stammer and how I deal with it. Um, and then I got in contact with a lady, Kirsten, who works at Stammer, and she got in con- She gave me the contact for Ronan. Contact. I sent him an email. And I was like, "Listen, I need your help. I need some advice." Um, he was like, "What you're doing is great. You're going to the language. You're going to the country. You're learning the language. You're enjoying the food. Enjoying everything." just keep going and if you stammer you stammer like accept it for what it is and I was like oh, that's actually quite true um and there was a big movement there is a big movement it was international stammering awareness day uh a couple a few days ago I did I did a video on Instagram on my Instagram um about my stammer and um yeah so um Ronan and a few other stammerers from the stammering community did a live and it was really cool to see him he's in Los, Ang- Los Angeles at the minute and um yeah it was cool it was nice to see him and he's actually really sweet he's actually quite good looking as well um <laughs> and um no yeah so it's cool and um yeah so what he was saying is like you're, you're doing well you know, keep keep at, keep going, keep keep the passion alive. As long as you have the passion, that that will carry you through. I was like, oh, that's actually really true. Um, as well as that, um, I'm learning Italian um, with Coffee Break Italian. I did a Coffee Break conversation session with Mark Prentleton, who's the CEO and founder of Coffee Break Italian Coffee Break Languages, and um, I stammered in that, so it was quite funny. I'll see if I can link. The article, the video of Coffee Break Conversations, and um, I'll see if I can link my video as well that I did for the International Stammering Awareness Day. I'll give it a go. Um, and yeah, so that's basically, there There are other organisations and associations that deal with stammering, like I know that Canada has one, I think, um, 
and I'm sure other parts of the parts of the world have their own. But yeah, I think that's a really really good way to um um kind of first step if you're stammering if you're someone who stammers and um you feel quite alone i think reaching out to an organization or association is is a first good step um yeah there's loads of um uh, networks online i think stutter social is one i'm on that one and there's another one i can't remember the name of it i'll link it down below um <clears throat> yeah i definitely think that's that's the first good good shout I think also just accepting that you're gonna stammer um whilst you're whilst you're talking. Uh it's just yeah. Just ac- accepting it is accepting it and okay, so the first the first thing I would say, accepting it and relaxing it. I know it sounds counterintuitive, I know you're gonna be like, Oh but I'm yeah, but I can't relax I get it. And the same way, I keep saying to myself, Kanmati, Nikki, Kanmati, Kanmati, calm, like, <sighs> yeah, it's not easy, I know, I know, I know, but the more you relax, the more, hopefully, you'll be able to just l- let the block happen, accept it, and try again. <sighs> first, first step. <laughs> Secondly, always have a pen and pad. Listen, I got written down on here. Like, that's how I have a pen and pad. Listen, it, it could be something as small as this. This is tiny. This is this fits into a bag. Like, it could be, I've got other ones that are a bit bigger. Um, Have a pen and pad. You lack, or you feel you lack, you lack in one aspect of the four main aspects. Be able to listen, to read, write, and, excuse me, listen, read, write, and um, speak. There we go. Um, if you lack in one, or you feel you lack in one, try and heighten the others. So I can read Italian pretty well. Should, I'm going to start doing this thing, actually. Yeah, Sidetrack. I'm going to start... Um, try. Try my best. Um, reading aloud. Because that will help. Um, I think. I hope so. Um, I could read okay. I listen a lot listen 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 a lot i listen to podcasts copper italian the radio the news the oh god youtube is my friend like the other italian youtubers that are just straight up italian um i was saying writing sorry <laughs> i was trying to thought writing i can write pretty well i can write pretty well like and that helps that's what i'm saying about the pen and pad if you really have a block and you can't get anything out and you don't want to revert to your mother tongue, pen and pad, write it down, write it down. If Even if you have to write it down before you even enter the enter whatever situation you're going into, write it down. Like, it will help you so much. It may give you the extra bit of time you need to calm down. Tip number three, learn how to say you stammer in your, in your, in your learning language. So for Italian... The verb to stammer is is balbatale, balbatale, which in the first person singular is io balbetto. Now you see what I just did there. I used the pronoun to help me jump onto the B because the B is a really hard word, hard sound for me to get out on its own. As you can probably tell. Um, <laughs> so, and that's also mentioned in the article as well. I explain why I choose the pronouns to help me jump, jump onto a sound. It's really hard to explain. So yeah, definitely pen and paper and being able to write really well on the language. If you really, really find it hard to speak that day, each day is different. You never know what you're going to be like from one day to the next, which is why I think I find it so annoying that people say, oh, you're putting it on or whatever. Oh, listen, let's not get into this, okay? Let's not even, I'm not even, I'm not, I'm not even going to entertain that, that thought right there. No. Learn different verbs. <sighs> yeah, learn different verbs. That's another, that's, that's tip number five, I guess. Um, learn different verbs. It's going to help you. If you know, if, if you constantly use the verb, one verb for certain things, learn another verb. So if you get stuck on that verb, or that 
syllable of that verb, you can then say, okay, let me try another verb, which means a similar thing or means the same thing. Um, I know in Italian they have uh, verbs that mean similar things. Um, give that a go. Give that a go. <laughs> give that a go. Accepting your stammer when you stammer. Um, relaxing as much as you can. Um, finding uh, the words for to stammer or I stammer in your t- n- learning language. Um, pen and pad. Um, it will help so much. Um, and uh, learn different verbs. Learn different verbs. So at least you have some kind of arsony, <laughs> arsony, when you're out there in the world or in the in in your target country, target language country, and yeah, that would be my advice. Those are my my five tips for you guys to help you guys on your way uh, when you're traveling solo as someone who stammers. That's that's just my my advice. Let me know if you have anything else that you guys want to add. Maybe there's some things I haven't thought about. Um, yeah, but yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you guys soon. Ciao. Alla prossima. <laughs>